All right, so we've got this shot of this lovely lady uh, smoking on a couch, which is a fun activity. And what we're going to do today is give her a nice uh, moody look. Probably going to lean towards the cool tones because cool tones are cool right now. And I'm also going to do a little bit of beauty work on her skin. So I'll be showing you how to qualify the skin and uh, work with the frequency tools inside DaVinci Resolve to enhance that skin, to make that skin look better. First thing I want to do, uh, I'm going to double check my project settings. So I'm pulling up from the gear icon at the bottom right. I am happy with what we have. You know what? I'm going to put this up to 4K just for myself. You don't have to do that. You can do whatever you like. You can do 1080p. I'm doing 23.976 for the frame rate. Color management, this is the big one. Go to color science for me, drop that down to color managed. And then we're going to go to HDR DaVinci wide gamut. And output color space, this depends on how you're monitoring. Um, I have my color grading monitor set to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. So that is what I am going to set my output color space to because that's what I can see. Um, but you might have something different. So again, set accordingly. Now, <clears throat> this footage was captured with red. And look what I've done here already. I need to change my video monitoring setting to match the timeline format that I set up. So I went into 4K, so my video, uh, my video monitoring also has to be in 4K as well. Otherwise, as you see in my grading monitor, everything is zoomed in a little too much. That's because I'm looking at a 4K timeline on a 1080p playback monitor. So we're going to fix that right now. And welcome back. Okay. Since this footage was all captured in red, in a red camera, in uh, red wide gamut RGB with log 3G10, uh, that's a, a raw recording format for the red camera, DaVinci Resolve will see that right away. It will detect that you have raw footage and it will automatically do a color transform over into the uh, timeline working space that you've chosen. So since I chose to work in Rec 709 2.4, DaVinci Resolve has automatically done a beautiful color transform. And what you're seeing right now is this image in Rec 709 2.4. So we are ready to begin working on this. So what I'm going to do first, now I have my node tree set up. So I always apply just uh, my, my typical node tree that has all the tools that I typically run into. But uh, we're going to start from the basics, and that is exposure and balance. Now, what I like to do, I'm going to go over to the waveform here, selecting my little qualifier, and I am running it over the skin. And I'm corresponding that with the uh, mainly the green channel. And like right now, I have the uh, waveform broken up into RGB. But for luminance, uh, the green channel is most heavily weighted for luminance. So I'm going to use that as my my uh, my viewpoint here. So I want the skin in this one to be nice and dark, probably around 30, 30, 40. Actually, 40 is a good point. I, I love 40 is typically where I go to personally. I just find it's a very cinematic uh, range for the skin tones to fall in. So I like that. And now I want to look at the color balance here. As you can see, the shot, it looks like it was intended to be a little bit warmer. The white balance has definitely been catered in, in the direction of uh, red, orange, red, orange, yellow. Uh, but I want to pull it back to a more neutral starting point. I like to, when I begin grading an image, I like to bring everything into a neutral spot, have the exposure good, and then build my look from there. So I'm going to use my print light keys, and I'm just going to bring out some of the orange here. Am I doing this right? No, of course not. Okay, let's, let's start that again. So I'm bringing out some of the orange and I'm gonna use my qualifier and find something that looks to be black. I'm heading over to the vector scope first before I do that. And now I'm looking at what the qualifier is telling me and I want the black area to be neutral. So sort of in the middle of the crosshair there, but also, 
I'm looking at my image because you have to use your eye. The eye is the most important point for reference, and I don't want this image to look too green. Maybe I'll put just a tad bit of warmth back in there. Okay, starting point where we're at now. Kind of nice, I like that. Let's go with it. I'm also gonna add one more tool here. This is the, um, the hell is this called? This is called Master Tone from Ravengrade. Really cool tool. You can identify and manipulate the lift gamma gain in the shadows independently, the midtones, and the highlights. So pretty handy tool. So I'm just looking over. I have my false color over here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but I, I'm getting a pretty low shadow reading uh, here, and I just want to bring that up a little bit. So I'm going to go to the low lift on this uh, tool here. And just... Bump that up a little bit because I want to retain information here. I'm not trying to get rid of anything, at least not yet. Now, I'm going to throw on my print film emulation of the Kodak 2383. Again, I will be making a LUT and having that available. Uh, now that has darkened everything substantially. So I'm going to go back to my exposure node here and I'm just going to use print light keys and bring the exposure back up so the skin is in let's go to our waveform I want the skin to be around 40 for me that's my preference you can do whatever the heck you want but I like oh I really like that okay now liking where we're going holy smokes I'm gonna add a little compression here just to show you again, for my compression, this is how I have my uh, curves here. And that is linked, YRGB, it's all linked. Just take that in a little bit. That is how I do my compression. Works every time like a charm. I'm gonna add some film density here. Again, using the film density, OFX DR17 DCTL, which you can find online and download and install. It's pretty handy. Again, what that is doing, it is lowering the luminance in um, your hue, hue channels. Lowering the luminance in your hues, <clears throat> which increases the perception of saturation and also removes a little bit of the luminance as well and kind of gives more of a filmic look. Okay, so now what we're going to do... I'm happy with how this looks. I think actually what I'll do is bring in, I love vignettes. I always find it just kind of finishes the look, but I want this one to be shaped a little better around her just so it matches more. Uh, and then before, after. So it just kind of draws your focus, draws your focus into the talent, the subject. Now, I want to get her skin looking as good as possible. So I have, I have all these parallel nodes here that I just kind of preset, and those can be used for a variety of things. But um, one of the things I'm using for is qualifying right now. So I'm selecting one of my unused parallel nodes here, and you'll see all of these all of these nodes here that I prepared have happened before the compression, before the density, before the film print emulation, because I want to work off. Uh, a neutral starting point with as much information as I can. So that's why I'm going back here. Now I'm going to select the qualifier. I'm going to use the 3D qualifier because I just like it. You don't have to. There's a variety of qualifiers that you can use. I just, I get pretty good results with this one. Just going to blur that up a little bit. And then I think I will also add a little mask here just to control where all of these qualifications are happening because we do have a very monotonous uh, palette happening here. So a lot of the colors in this scene are very similar to one another. So qualifying can be a little more difficult, not impossible, but uh, you might find that one a little more difficult to work with. So I'm just going to, I'm tracking this mask and we're going to isolate qualifications into the mask. So I'm just letting that go. I'm gonna keep you here for the whole experience. 
I want you to know what it feels like to motion track. It's fun. Oh, that's a wonderful bullet coffee. A little bit of butter, protein powder, chocolate protein powder, and of course, coffee and MCT oil. Keeps you going, keeps you focused. Okay, so we've got our thing tracked. Now, going over to the mask tools here, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, feathering inside, outside, soften it up a bit. And then we're going to go back to our mask and I'm quite happy with that. That will work for me. I'm just going to try to get rid of the lips a little bit. I don't want too much of the lips. Oh boy, that's a messy one. Uh, let's see here. I think maybe, do I want to denoise that at all? I'm happy with that. That, that to me, that will work. That will work very well. I think I'll just drip it inside a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Now check this out. There's a lot of stuff that we can do here, but my new favorite way to do this is to locate the beauty tool. Resolve FX beauty tool. It's built in. I'm in uh, DaVinci Resolve 18 studio. So if you're not in studio, I'm not really sure which, uh, which OFX tools are missing there. I hope you have beauty. <clears throat> if you don't, buy the studio version. It's not that expensive and uh, free updates forever. Okay, so what we're going to do now, operating mode, ultra beauty. I only work in ultra beauty. So let's go to filter. And so I'm just going to turn off and on just to look where we're at right now. And I'm going to go to my filter radius. And I'm going to move that around. Oops, we got to turn the note on. I'm going to move that around until I feel like most of the little pores and bumps and perhaps pimples, I'm not saying she really has anything to worry about, but I'm looking for a range here that will seem to work with and eliminate the most detail on her skin. And then I'm going to go down to the edge threshold and play around until I find a spot that seems to do the most work in terms of correcting and smoothing out these skin details. And then I'm going to leave the strength up at full because I'll do a global blend at the end to tone it down. You never want to overdo the skin beauty because then things look just like really messed up. Like you don't want it to look like it's been worked on. Okay, now I'm going down to detail recovery. I'm going to preview the edges and the details. I like to go right to the width and then make it make it so there are like many sharp details here. This is just how I like to do it. Um, then I might blur it a little bit. I mess with the gamma so it's a little bit darker, kind of like that. Then I'll just preview the recovery. And so that is kind of what details will be brought back in. So, I mean, you can tone it down a little bit. Maybe something that looks a little more plasticky and less old. Maybe like, maybe like right there. Kind of like she's got saran wrap over her face, which is very scary. <laughs> Don't do that. So now I'm going to uncheck the preview recovery. And now I'm going to go down to texture. I'm going to preview the texture that we're going to bring back in. And this is how we're going to kind of balance it out with information that we have taken away and now information that we're bringing back in, or texture rather. We don't want it to be too smooth. And texture is a very good way to balance out any of the reductions that we've done. So I'm just going to, like, this is all about taste. That's a, that's a major point to consider. I mean, you got the tools. You can do all the things, but what you really have to do is develop your taste and uh, get good at identifying corrections and colors and balances that look good to, well, the people that matter most. And that's your audience, that's your clients. It's not always just about you. Okay, on, off, on. I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. 
I'm not going to do too much more because I, I feel like I've done something incredibly beautiful right now and I don't want to mess it up. So let's look at that. Uh, I'm going to add in some grain because I feel like grain just brings a video image to life and it can also hide any imperfections in the image. Um, maybe some of your skin qualifications weren't perfect. Put some grain over it. Um, it'll also help you know, smoothen out and uh, enhance the consistency of the texture tone in the face and the skin. Uh, another thing that we could do while we're here, I find her eyes are a little bit underlit to me. So what we could do really quickly is go to another node that we have here in the, the parallel nodes that I've built. And I'm going to create just a little oval mask here. Just like so. And I'm kind of creating like ski goggles that I'm going to put on her. Kind of like if you're doing a filter on TikTok or Instagram and you're adding the sunglasses. Kind of like that. I wonder if that's a good description. Okay, now I'm going to the tracker window and I'm just going to hit the, the back and forth. So it will track all the way forward, all the way backward. So we're going to let that go. I want you to experience what it feels like to motion track. That's a lot of staring, a lot of, a lot of waiting. Excellent. <clears throat> so that's coming back. We're tracking. I'm happy with this image. I love red. I think they did a fantastic job implementing the IPP2 color science and the log uh, 3G10, which allowed them to compete with Ari's log C. Ari's incredible, legendary color science. Wow, it's good. Okay, this is tracked. So now I'm just going to go over to, you know what? I think I'm going to utilize that really cool DCTL that I'm trying to sell you on called Master Tone. And I'm going to play around with some of the shadows here and just see where I can enhance that. Cause I, I like, I'm going to go in the low gamma right now and look what happens right away. It's I'm almost improving her eye bags as well. Look at that. Oh, it's pretty sweet. You know what? I'm happy with that. If you're happy with what you've done and it looks good and you know, it's good and you're confident to send it out, you don't have to overdo any of this stuff. Subtlety is the key in post-production, in color correction. I'll speak for color correction. I'm not a VFX artist, but subtlety in color correction is absolutely essential. I'm going to add one more topper correction here. I'm showing you where this is hitting, just at the very top of the screen. I think I'm just going to bring that down just a tad, just to bring the focus and the lighting uh, down into the middle of the, the frame here. So. I'm happy with that. Um, I am going to add some noise reduction at the beginning of the shot to show you the settings that I had used. See, take a look. And then I'm going to render this out. And uh, we've done a great job here. This footage is available on raw film it's raw dot film they have an excellent collection of stock footage all shot in red raw and a lot of it is 8k so it's incredible so check that out this has been fun i'll see you later